Good morning. Welcome to our morning worship service this glorious 10th of October. It's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, to start our service, can you turn to our liturgy? O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And a short prayer, the collect. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gift of your love new every morning in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us sing this well-known hymn, O Worship the King. that we're in the, light, in the presence of the King 
and his holy his holiness is here all around us wherever you are we can turn to a time of confession christ the light of the world has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts in his light let us examine ourselves and confess our sins come let us return to the lord and say father eternal giver of light and grace we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we thought in what we said and done through ignorance through weakness through our own deliberate fault we have wounded your love and marred your image in us we are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son jesus christ who died for us forgive us all that has passed and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light amen may almighty god who sent his son into the world to save sinners bring you his pardon and peace now and forever amen the first reading is taken from hebrews chapter 4 verses 12 to 16. indeed the word of god is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword piercing until it divides soul from spirit joints from marrow it's able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart and before him no creature is hidden but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast to our confession for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and pray that as we consider aspects of Jesus, you will enable us to learn and to become more like him. Amen. Jesus the storyteller, Jesus the controversialist, Jesus the miracle worker. And last week we had a great sermon from Jan on Jesus the teacher. And so today we're halfway through our series on the aspects of Jesus and his ministry. And uh, today it's Jesus, the mentor. And each week adds a layer to our picture of this unique and remarkable man and his, the impact of his three short years in public ministry. And today, in our generation, there's a rash of new professions, life coach, personal trainer, spiritual director, style guru, and so on. And they all centre around people's felt need for help in their personal development to achieve their potential. There's a story that I'm, I'm sure you've heard of before, of Jesus arriving in heaven and the angels clustering round and one asks him about his plans for the evangelization of the world. You've left it in the hands of that ragtag bunch of 11 assorted disciples. But what if they fail? What's the plan B? There is no plan B, said Jesus. And we know that the worldwide Christian church of which we're a part is a result of that plan A. And we quite rightly in this context make much of the transferring and empowering work of the Holy Spirit received by the disciples at Pentecost. But we need to remember that those 11 from 12 were the product of this three years of dedicated investment by Jesus as Jesus the mentor. So let's have a look at what went on and maybe we can learn something. First of all, let's see how it all began. The story is familiar, the way Jesus went out in his early days calling the twelve to follow him. 
and in most cases we don't have much detail, some we don't know anything about at all, but Matthew and Mark tell us that when Jesus called Peter and his brother Andrew, he said, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they left their nets and followed him. And so began the roller coaster ride of the rest of their lives. And you could say that that roller coaster was divided into two halves, their apprenticeship before Pentecost and after Pentecost, their own ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit. Though such a division, I suppose, would actually be rather too simple. But on that Galilean shore, Peter and Andrew left their nets and entered into a contract with Jesus to be their mentor. And that's how mentoring is. It's not casually ringing up or pinging an email to ask for advice about something. It's entering into an agreement that until it ends, you will allow your mentor access to enable ministry to be reflected upon, actions to be challenged, plans to be examined, and the experience of the mentor to be garnered. And there is some measure of in contractual agreement always between mentor and mentee. And as we read the Gospels, we see the Twelve following Jesus, travelling with him, walking the roads together, listening to Jesus' teaching, seeing his healings and other miracles, watching his interaction with people. They had unique access to the whole of Jesus' life and ministry, and you could divide those who followed Jesus into three or four groups. There were the crowd who gathered round. There was the bigger group, which would be the 72 that we read about being sent out by Jesus. And then there were the 12, and within the 12, then there were Peter, James and John, who seemed to have a special place at the table. And clearly it was the twelve and the three among them who had a special place with Jesus as their mentor. In our reading, it was the twelve who asked Jesus to teach them to pray. It was the twelve to whom Jesus explained the parable of the sower and other parables. And at the end, it was the twelve who sat with Jesus to share his last supper. They had privileged access to Jesus as their mentor. On occasion, we see Peter, James and John having special opportunities like the uh, Mount of Transfiguration to share in what Jesus was doing. And those disciples may at times have seemed clueless and unprepared for the task ahead. But in fact, over those three years, Jesus taught them continually by his word and example, and it rubbed off. And they remembered it, and that's how we have the Gospels. And we don't know if there were isolated incidents, but the Gospels tell us there were at least two occasions when Jesus added another dimension to their discipleship, when he sent them out in twos to minister without him. You've seen how I do it. Now you go and have a go. And when they returned, full of excitement at the way God had been faithful, we read that Jesus sat down with them and debriefed them and shared in their success. There were times when Jesus had to correct their thinking, such as when they tried to prevent children coming to him. And occasionally he had to admonish, as when Peter tried to deny that Jesus would be put to death. And sometimes there were words of warning, such as Peter, before his denial. But step by step, Jesus led them along the road. He mentored his disciples to be the apostles that they became. And as we look on in the New Testament, we see other examples of the mentoring process, so that under the wing of Barnabas, John Mark, who'd been such a disappointment to Paul, became his valued associate in the Gospel. And as we follow the progression of Timothy, we see how Paul took a young man under his wing and enabled him to become a confident church leader. As we said at the outset, the principles we've been exploring 
are in vogue in secular life. Within the church, in all sorts of places, we see the ideas being picked up as well as it's recognised that here is a vital biblical tool for growing discipleship. John Wesley knew about it and that's uh, how Methodism was constructed to encourage people to grow one another in the faith. And so we need to ask the question, for always as we study scripture, we do not do it to gain intellectual knowledge alone, but we do it so that we can learn and grow in our discipleship to become more like Jesus so that we can find the biblical truths and principles which will enable us and our church to grow in the kingdom. As I look back over my Christian life, I can see many who've had a great positive influence on me, but none more so than my youth leader when I was a teenager. He died a year or two ago in his late 90s, and the church was packed with people who travelled from all over the country to bear testimony to a life given in enabling young men to know Jesus and to grow in relationship with him through teaching, through the example of his life, and through time given to sharing individual lives and experiences and plans. And I'm grateful for the time that he gave to me often on a Saturday morning, uh, to talk through things that were going on. And the question that we need to ask is, what could I gain and what could I contribute in mentoring? When it comes to Christian discipleship, we're all lifetime learners. So it's a question, is there someone that you could have as your mentor to help you along that process? Is there someone you trust, someone who knows you, someone with Christian wisdom, someone to whom you might have a degree of accountability? Moses and Joshua, Barnabas and John Mark, Paul and Timothy, Jesus and his disciples give us a pattern and having a mentor <coughs> It's not, it's not something that the Bible says we must do, but the examples it gives shows us what a good idea it can be. So could you be a mentor to someone younger in faith? Could you find a mentor who would help and encourage you in your Christian journey if you are indeed serious about following Jesus? Jesus the mentor shows us what a good idea it can be. Let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity through this series to look at Jesus and the different ways in which he ministered and the principles of life that he showed us. And we pray that we may learn and not just learn, but do. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Inspired by David's talk, let us all say together the words that affirm our faith. We believe in God, the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God, the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayers today will be led by William Knowles. Let us pray. Conscious of our need for God's power in our lives, let us pray to him now. Father, as we seek to emerge from the pandemic, the complexities and fragilities of the consumer economy which we have so long taken for granted are becoming increasingly apparent. Help us, Father, as we come to terms with the implications of this, to focus our hearts and in our communities on your values 
and on the priorities which reflect your will. We pray for those whose businesses and lives are threatened with disruption. Help us to think always of those more seriously affected than we are, to be alert and responsive to when inconvenience turns to hardship, and in our day-to-day -day lives to seek always to do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your church, the body of Christ, with all its collected gifts and weaknesses. Give us all, whether as leaders or otherwise, the strength and clarity of vision to address those weaknesses and to enable those gifts to flourish for the furtherance of your kingdom on earth. Give us in our own diocese and benefice the wisdom we need as we seek to organise ourselves in the most effective way to achieve your will. Grant us the grace to recognise that in your spirit we are one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for those close to us, for those who lift our hearts and for those who drive us to distraction. We pray for those we instinctively warm to and those with whom there are frequent misunderstandings. May we practice self-discipline in all that we say to others and in the way it is said, using our mouths to speak wisely and positively with love in both hearts and voices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose bodies or spirits are heavy with suffering, that they may be given courage and hope, ease from the pain and healing to wholeness. We lift before you silently those known to us whom we wish to remember. We pray that we may know how best to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as Lord of both time and eternity, we commit to your keeping those who have died to this life, that, freed from all pain and forgiven, they may live in the peace and joy of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pour out our thanks and praise for the gift of life and the gift of one another. May we treat each other with renewed reverence, joy and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We finish our prayers with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. To draw our service to a close, let us enjoy this glorious song of praise called Relevation, Revelation Song. You may not have heard it before, but enjoy it.
a short prayer and a blessing to close our service. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through the light of your glory, we may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And may we see you again soon. Amen.